guys, Nick from Practically Tactical here. I have a, a video I finally got around to editing so I can get up for you guys. So what we have right here is the Day 2 Ground Final Evo from Dominating the Entangled Fight. If you guys haven't checked out that AAR, please go do that. Uh, it's a very long AAR, even for our standards. But there's so many lessons to learn from this class. Uh, entanglements happen. There's plenty of videos. You've seen them. Uh, so starting to live in that realm uh, and understanding that realm and how to manage the realm, I think manage is the right word. Uh, but it, it, it's incredibly important. Uh, the gun isn't always a tool, which kind of will... We'll see here in a little bit, uh, but uh, so little setup for this scenario. You'll hear kind of Paul talk for a second. I'm on my back. My partner starts on me. We both have weapons, and it's just a go. So, and uh, just as a little preface here, because this is going to bite me in the ass later, I sprained my ankle the week before this class, and I have a I have zero strength in my ankle. And anytime you're in this position, you want to keep your ankles locked locked in here. This bites me ass actually a couple different ways. And then uh, you'll see I can't hold them and then it, it bites me in the ass. But so we're starting out here. Uh, this is my buddy Brian. Super awesome dude. Uh, phenomenal guy. One hell of a freaking fighter. Way more, way more talented than me. Uh, but super awesome guy. Training partner. Uh, you know, he gives me some words of encouragement during this too. So, uh, but shout out to all, having awesome training partners. Uh, that's what really will push you and really help you get better. So we're starting off. Brian's on top. I have my legs around and locked. And you'll see immediately it's starting limb control. So we'll kick it off here and I'll be stopping recording and talking uh, and kind of going to through a few different things here because uh, I think there's some valuable lessons to be learned from this. Okay. So right now, this is where it really comes to bite me in the ass. I can't keep my legs locked. It comes off. What I was trying to do was keep these locked, start moving around, try to get them off that base. Number one, he has to focus more on his stability uh, than being on more on me, and then I was going to try to move him and get him moved off. But obviously, these did come off, and uh, that bites me in the ass here. Yeah, try to relock it, uh, but I can't because I want to try to move him. Yeah, what happens. So he goes for a weapon. Uh, so, so, boom, right here. Again, until you take these classes, there's so many valuable lessons learned. I just stopped him from drawing a gun with my shin, okay? For those that, I'm just going to draw my gun. Again, I'm not super freaking talented here, people. Not at all. I stop him from drawing his gun. If you'll notice here, I actually, again, not by really my choice, but I have his arm moved away from my weapon. And then, so I switch, and uh, I, I ended up drawing my gun. We'll have some lessons to kind of talk about. So first off, when I went to draw my gun, uh, you'll see I really don't get, I have control of this right now, good ankle lock, or excuse me, wrist lock. And then I go to, sw I switch really before I get control, um, which again, not really good to do. I. Oops, let me go back here. I accidentally skipped too far. So I get my gun out, but you'll see automatically, and you, you see it in, in these classes where I'm waving that gun around. So we'll go back here, get it out, waving that gun around, and uh, then it becomes a scrum for the gun. Uh, the gun. So you'll see here, legs are in really bad position here. Uh, I should have had them locked and or got my feet into his hips up here. Uh, really should have got, if I can't keep them locked, these really should have been dug into his hips. I, would, I think that's a spider guard, I think. Uh, so I can have, number one, leverage to push him back. It's a good position, and it would give me more space to do. Um, so I didn't have that locked. I didn't have those in there. Uh, Brian's a super athletic dude. Jumps over me. Now it's a freaking scrum for the gun. So at this point in time, it is now turned into, uh, instead of a, I'm fighting him, we're now fighting for control of the gun. Oh, hello. Here's number two coming in. Um, now I'm blanking on his name right now. Another main dude, he's a, actually a black belt uh, BJJ guy coming uh, from uh, Iowa. Uh, Jason, Jason Clark. There we go. Uh, super awesome dude. And again, what this is simulating is, hey, being aware of other people around you. 
making more people uh, being, you have to look at your surroundings. Maybe, you know, if you got into some scrum, some buddies, dudes run out from the bar, you need to start being aware of your surroundings at all times. So I'm getting some taps to remind me that, hey, uh, there's now another dude. And of course, herein lies the problem of uh, waves my gun around, become a fight for the gun. Uh, what's priority in this thing right now is I got to get, I got to get that gun, uh, either control of it or uh, get her out. So I'm now trying to get up. I'm now trying to position myself uh, where this guy has a harder time getting to me. Uh, and again, this is this, you'll see it online of like stack bodies, stack bodies. Well, uh, you can stack bodies all you want of, of people uh, trying to get, get you know di when people say stack bodies, so it would be him and then the other guy or multiple guys or whatever. The problem is, is this guy can get around stacking. It's not that freaking hard. So, and it's a lot of movement. Uh, you can see right here. If he wants to get around, it's not that hard to get around. So we're still fighting for the gun. Obviously, he has way better position on the gun now. And I guess to go back here uh, real quick, because it'll come up. So when I get my gun out here, I should have went to just a hard thumb pectoral index. And even when he jumped... For it, I should have kept it in there. Again, elbows into the body, planted that gun, thumb pectoral, instead of because the the more we get that gun away from our body, the less strength and leverage we have on that gun or weapon or whatever it is. So, the gun comes out and you still have it there, and the guy you fail on, on this aspect here. The guy jumps for your gun, still keep it in there instead of trying to move it away from him because you're going to have more leverage and more strength on that gun in right here, and more than likely he's probably not going to want to. Uh, you know, cross where that muzzle is. So uh, that's just kind of something to think about here. So we'll jump back up here. So again, trying to stack bodies. Again, for, for everybody, it's like, oh, if there's multiple points to stack bodies. Well, that sounds very simple, but uh, easier said than done, especially when you're trying to fight. I actually was tempted right here just to break and run. Um, which uh, could have, quote-unquote, finished my Evo, but that's really not the point of the drill. By the way, that's Larry Lindenman, point-driven training back there. So uh, keep going working this. You wouldn't want to drop a gun and leave it and run. Uh, you know, I'm, of course, they're situation environmental dependent. So, but, so we keep working this here. <laughs> and then we'll see in a second here where problems stay up, stay up, stay up. Yeah, I didn't stay up. Again, which comes to another thing. So many people are like, oh, BJJ, they just want to, you know, take every fight to the ground. It's like, no, you don't want to go on the ground. However, going to the ground happens, like you just saw there. My plan was not to go to the ground at all. Don't want to be there. But it just happens. So in a second here, you'll see Brian. So for those, if it's, it's kind of hard to see. The second that he ends up moving his hand around. That's right. Look your way up. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to see. And again, this is why now I carry a knife after this class. He's deployed a knife. Um, so super shitty right here. This is not going very well. Um, it's why knives are so incredibly important uh, to have, especially carried appendix. All weapons carried appendix. Uh, makes it far superior. So now he has a knife out. I don't know that yet. So I'm still trying to get control of the gun. He's stabbing the shit out of me. Just, just so much fun stuff. Getting close by the dude. So I finally get control of the gun. And I get rid of the gun. Uh, in a scrum like this, it I, I don't want to keep having to fight over that gun. I have huge problems already. So... Uh, now it's I realize that the knife has been deployed, so we go into uh, a limb control. So get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. fighting for that. He hits like a pussy. Or, yeah, I haven't gotten to limb control yet. I might not even know the knife's out yet at this point. <laughs> and I fucked up right there. I really should have tried to move him in front of me. Um, again, it's one of those things until you start training and doing stuff. All that's running through your mind is get this fucking guy off of me. And it sucks. So, at this point in time, I think that's where I finally see, oh shit, 
There's a fucking knife. See you go. So now I'm in really bad position. Um, and here's where I have to forego trying to get into a better position to controlling the blade that's in his hand. So we'll kind of roll over here. He's on top of me. I'm just trying to get in a good wrist lock position right now. Uh, and then I'm kind of... I kind of roll my body onto that arm to give me a little, at least, hey, I'm good at one thing, being fucking fat. So I can at least use that weight to kind of keep that down and help with control. <laughs> nice. Good work. So good. Try to get off that. And again, Brian's so freaking good. Uh, you can see his wrestling background right there. And really what I should have done right here is I got both hands up here. I really should have used this hand just to push off um, and, again, kind of sway his body, make it off a little bit of line. Uh, so, yeah, that was my day two Evo. Lots of lessons learned there. Um, it's, it's hard and brutal. I can tell you this class, number one, uh, is an amazing class. Uh, you really, again, if the gun's the only option, that's cool. Until you saw it like me of, I get my gun out, maybe it would have worked. Maybe it, maybe this would have worked. Maybe it wouldn't have. Uh, another thing, especially when you see this stuff kind of going on, and you get, you know, fingers and clothes, the gun could have jammed, malfunctioned, whatever it might be. And so we can't just rely on just the gun. you got to get to position, as you saw. With Brian getting into into good positions, number one, being in a better position gives you better leverage. You're in more control and you have more options. So, for example, right here, he's in a dominant position. He ends up deploying a knife because, again, he's in a far superior position. He has my back. Uh, there's just so many lessons to be learned from this. Uh, but you got to keep fighting no, no matter what. You have to keep fighting no matter what. And actually, in this part here, when I was trying to get it, uh, again, Brian is, is a super amazing training partner, uh, was just telling me, man, don't give up, don't give up, keep fighting, keep fighting. It's not like he just stopped at that point in time, um, but he really uh, was an awesome training partner as well. Uh, same with, with Jason. I mean, he could have just walked up and fucking rocked me. Uh, but again, it goes back to one of those things of the drill of you're fighting this dude. Are you aware of what's going on? Maybe he's got another buddy coming and getting involved. Uh, so I have a long way to go in combative. Is by no me, I'm no, I'm not even a, a novice at this stuff. But I wanted to give you guys an, uh, a look at this. And so you, number one, it's a ton of freaking work. Like this class was straight up banging for two straight days, uh, but it was such a phenomenal class. And again, going beyond just the gun, it's the a gun is a super phenomenal tool. Uh, it is actually it's great at leveling the playing field. However, when we start to look at these entanglements and kind of what happens, um, and again, it's not like mine was the only one like this. Um, you got to know what to do, when to do it, uh, and work towards that position. Position then submission. Whatever that submission is, running away, deploying a weapon, deploying a gun, whatever it might be, uh, working towards that. Um, and you can't quit no matter what. There's no quitting in a fight, especially if it's for your life. So. Uh, there's a look at my Dominating the Entangled Fight Day 2 Ground Evo. I hope you guys learned some lessons from this. And if you have the opportunity to get into some combatives, uh, take some uh, integrated classes like this with weapons, and you'll be a far uh, superior person. And I'm far more confident with the lessons I've learned from this class uh, in just in my daily life and self-defense. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, be sure to like, subscribe. Uh, check out the AAR on this class. We're having a video come out eventually on this class as well because it's just such a phenomenal class. So there it is, guys. Uh, like, subscribe. If you got any questions, drop them below, and we'll catch you in the next video.